This week I want to focus on the Lenten pillar of prayer. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about prayer. So often when people talk about prayer, they reduce it to one of two things. They reduce it either to prayers of petition, where we bring our needs before the Lord and say, Lord, this is what I want you to do, this is how I want you to do it, and when I want you to do it. And I say that's disordered because it makes God this kind of cosmic butler who's there to take care of our needs, but then just kind of fades away in the background when we don't need anything. The other misconception around prayer is people who reduce prayer to simply rote prayer, saying a bunch of Our Fathers, Hail Marys, Glory Bees, memorized prayers that effective, yes, powerful, yes, but often we do it without thinking about it. See, prayer, when we properly understand it, is about forming a proper relationship with God. It's entering into dialogue with Him. And like with any relationship we have, we need to enter into dialogue with the person we're in a relationship. So it becomes important, if we want a relationship with God, that we enter into prayer. And it becomes important that as we pray, we remember the goal of our prayer is to form this relationship with God, which means that we can't simply reduce it to something like, oh, here's a list of my needs, or simply saying some memorized words to the Lord. We have to be honest in approaching our prayer. I think the honesty in our prayer life can begin by recognizing what is my relationship to God. And this is where I think a prayer like the Our Father that Jesus taught us, that great prayer, becomes so important because it establishes right off the bat what my proper relationship to God is. Our Father. God is my Father. That means that he's above me. I'm, I'm his creature. I'm his child. It also means he's got concern for me. He's got responsibility to, to take care of me. It also puts forth my own obligations to him. As, as a father, I'm supposed to be loyal to him. I'm supposed to honor him. I'm supposed to follow his commands. Um, so it sets up this relationship right off the bat. I think that's something we tend to miss a lot in our prayer life. Instead, what we do is we come to God saying, Lord, you're kind of my cosmic butler, so here's what I want you to do. Or instead, we just babble. We, we say words without any any meaning behind it. Now, if God is our Father, and that's the proper relationship we have with Him, well, that also sets up a lot of dynamics in our prayer life. One of the things it means is that we can come before Him in honesty, as we should be able to come to our own Father in honesty, and say, this is who I am, this is what I'm dealing with, these are my struggles, and can you help me through this? Can you give me the guidance that I need? Can you help me understand what I need to be doing to be the best version of myself, to become who you want me to be? See, so often we, we miss that part of, of prayer. We miss the fact that we're supposed to be listening and asking the Lord, who is it you're asking me to be and what is it you're trying to teach me through these various circumstances in my life? Lent becomes a great season for us to refocus our prayer lives. And I think it's important that as we do that, we look at some of those questions and the dynamic of our relationship with God. How do I see myself vis-a-vis -vis God? How do I understand who I am in relationship to him? Am I listening for the ways in which God's speaking to me? See, that's something we often struggle with because God doesn't speak to us the way other human beings do. In other words, we're not going to get a phone call, a text message, or an email from God. But he does speak to us. And he speaks to us through the circumstances of our lives. And he asks us to read the signs. That's what he tells us in Scripture. He says, you guys don't seem to be reading the signs properly. The way we read the signs is we say, what is it that these situations that I'm in are teaching me in my life about who I am, my gifts, my talents, my weaknesses, my failings? And from that, how do I use these talents I have to serve God? Or if it's a weakness, how do I recognize my own weakness and work around that or make up for that? These become important questions to ask in prayer. We need to also spend more time in silence. You know, this is hard for us as Americans especially to spend time in silence. In our Western culture, we're constantly going and doing. and We don't value being and just sitting in the presence of someone. And yet that's so important to our relationships, not only with God, but with others. I mean, just spending time with friends sometimes, not doing anything, so to speak, can actually be some of the most valuable time we have in a relationship. Well, the same is true in our relationship with God, spending that time just being in his presence. This is where something like adoration becomes so important, spending time in front of the blessed sacrament where Jesus Christ is present to us, body, blood, soul, and divinity, and we can just be in his presence. I think the other thing that becomes important is for us to be able to truly enter into that dialogue with God in a free manner. So often I find people will think that if I enter into a relationship with God when I pray, I have to be very formal and I, I can't really bring my true emotions, my true feelings to God. So that's a misunderstanding of who God is. Again, 
God's our Father, he wants to hear what's truly going on in our lives, even if that means we're frustrated with him. So we can come to God legitimately and say, Lord, there's all these things going on in the world that I don't understand, I can't comprehend, and they just don't seem to make any sense. What are you doing? Um, and that's a fair position to, to bring to God. Now, as long as we're not doing it in such a way that we're holding God accountable, so to speak, and putting ourselves above God, but we're saying, Lord, I, I don't understand this. Can you help me to understand? Can you help explain to me why these things are going on and what I'm supposed to learn from this and what you're calling me to as a result of these things? That's a valid form of prayer because it's entering into that true relationship with God. During this Lenten season, I encourage everyone to focus on your prayer life. And if your prayer life has been in one of those misconceived categories or one where you don't have that proper relationship with God, now is a good time to to make some changes and to say, what is it that I need to do so that I can have that properly ordered relationship with God where I view him as my father who loves me, who wants a relationship with me, and where I understand that he's calling me to something and all I need to do is listen to find out what it is he's calling me to do. I think that's the model that we need to look at this Lenten season so that we can have the joy of being in a properly ordered relationship with God.